Ladies and gentlemen, economic development lies at the top of our national priorities. To achieve, the, uh, 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 to achieve that, regional peace and stability are imperative. Peaceful neighborhood is, neighborhood is also essential for us to optimally utilize the potential offered by the, uh, of the regional connectivity initiatives. There are a number of uh, in regional connectivity initiative that we have already undertaken, and there are some which are in the pipeline. As far as Afghanistan is concerned, uh, after Afghanistan itself, Pakistan has the greatest stake in an Afghanistan that is at peace within and with its regional and international partners. This objective lies at the heart of our efforts to directly engage with the Afghan interim government, as well as cooperate with the international community on Afghanistan. We are hosting close to 4 million Afghan refugees in Pakistan. And this, this is something that we have been hosting for the last almost four decades. Afghan authorities and the international community, they continue to work to ensure that uh, these Afghan refugees, they, whenever the situation settles down, they go back to contribute to the economic development of, the, of their own country, which is Afghanistan. Uh, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is something that we have uh, we feel really feel proud of because uh, the number of uh, refugees uh, that we have hosted over the last several decades, that is uh, perhaps unprecedented anywhere in the world. We sh also share the international community's concerns over human rights situation in Afghanistan, especially issues related to women's rights, girls' education, and women's employment. We will continue to raise these issues with the Afghan interim administration. We believe that instead of coercive measures, engaging the Afghan interim government is much more likely to deliver results. Equally important is to avert humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Uh, for that purpose, I think delinking aid from political considerations holds the key to the key in this regard. We re remain steadfast in our commitment to fight terrorism and extremism. We condemn all forms of forms and manifestation of terrorism, including state terrorism and state-sponsored violence against religious minorities. We also reject any attempt to politicize the issue of terrorism by linking it with certain countries, communities, regions or religions. The entire global community is the victim and we have to act together to uproot this menace. For Pakistan, the biggest concern right now is the enhanced terrorist threat from TTP and ISK and their ability to use Afghan soil for launching attacks against Pakistan. We remain closely engaged with the Afghan interim administration on this issue. While we are committed to fighting and defeating the terror terrorists, we wish to highlight the terrorist outfits trying to gain a foothold in Afghanistan should be treated as a threat to the neighborhood and the entire international community. Pakistan desires peaceful and cooperative neighborly ties with India. Unfortunately, Pakistan's positive outreach and peace overtures, including the opening of Kartarpur Corridor for visa-free visits from India, from Indian Sikh community into Kartarpur, and, uh, um, and my predecessor's visit, visit to India for the SCO meeting have not have, have, uh, have been met with negativity. <clears throat> India's uh, illegal actions in the occupied Jammu and Kashmir 
and abhorrent human rights violations of innocent Kashmiris at the hand of, hands of Indian security forces have further deteriorated relations between our two countries. Worsening religious extremism in India, especially against Muslims, has further complicated the situation. In such a complex environment, objectives of regional peace and stability calls for peaceful, constructive dialogue on all outstanding issues, including Jammu and Kashmir. India's uh, belligerence and anti-Pakistan theatrics for domestic elections are taking us further away from this objective. Pakistan's relations with China are historical and anchored in strong trade and economic ties. China is Pakistan's largest trading partner and a major investor, especially in infrastructure and energy sectors. China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is a flagship project that aims at enhancing connectivity and improving infrastructure. I must underscore that Pakistan's relationship with China are not a zero-sum game and not at the expense of our relations with any other country, least of all with the United States of America, with which we have, a, we have robust ties and a relationship of trust. We believe we can have close and cooperative relations with both the United States and China. Having acted as a bridge between the two countries in the past, we remain convinced that a stable and cooperative relationship between US and China is, uh, is uh, imperative for global growth, development, and security. Pakistan's position on the Ukrainian crisis is dictated by our belief in amicable resolution of conflicts and respect for the UN principles and territorial integrity and sovereignty. We will continue to play a constructive role to help end the war and mitigate the sufferings of the Ukrainian people. We hope that peace would prevail to allow people of both Russia and Ukraine to enjoy its dividends. We also believe that mitigating the impacts of this crisis on global food and energy security is critical and hope for early resumption of Black Sea Grain Initiative. We recognize the importance of international cooperation for global peace and, and prosperity. To this end, Pakistan has always been a strong advocate for multi multilateralism, believing that through dialogue and diplomacy, we can resolve conflicts, alleviate poverty, and achieve sustainable development. We have actively involved, we have been actively involved in the United Nations peacekeeping missions, contributing our troops to promote peace in conflict ridden areas. Pakistan also considers arms control, disarmament, and non proliferation efforts as vital tools to promote the goals of peace and security at the global and regional levels. Pakistan has always advocated the need for inclusive forums for deliberations and negotiations, taking into account the security interests of all states. Pakistan has been a leading voice for the reforms of the Security Council to make it more democratic, inclusive, and accountable through reforms of its membership and improvement in its working methods. Climate change is another pressing global challenge as last year's devastating floods bear testament, Pakistan has been on the receiving end of the worst impacts of climate change, despite being one of the lowest contributors to, glo to, to global warming. We are doing our part to combat it by investing with the help of our friends like the United States of America in reconstruction, tapping renewal, renewable energy, reforestation, and sustainable agriculture practices. Ladies and gentlemen, we are committed to moving our economy to macroeconomic stability. 
And uh, the good news is that um, since May of this year, the macroeconomic indicators in Pakistan, they have improved significantly. CPI index, which stood at 38% in May this year, has come down to 27%. We have also embarked upon an ambitious program to, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, raise taxes, and the taxation system has also been reformed in recent months. And the dividends of this, these reforms will be, will be apparent very, very soon. We are also uh, 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 introduced a, a special program for investment in Pakistan, which is known as uh, uh, Special Investment Facilitation Council. The idea basically uh, behind this initiative is to cut the red tape and introduce uh, uh, a kind of a one window, uh, a real one window operation for investors to invest in Pakistan. The, uh, this uh, new concept has generated a lot of interest, particularly amongst the, uh, the GCC countries. And in the last one month, we have signed agreements with investors from uh, the Middle Eastern countries under this program, almost uh, uh, close to about $35 billion. The investment is coming in sectors like agriculture, information technology, energy and uh, energy, mines and mil minerals, and defense production. All these areas are up for investment for uh, overseas uh, investors, and the response has been extremely positive from our point of view. We are also training uh, about, we have set up new IT training centers in Pakistan, and we uh, hope to produce about 200,000 IT experts every year, which would, from, our, from a conservative estimate, will uh, take our IT exports from the current level of $2.5 billion to almost $10 billion dollars in the next four to five years. One important factor that has been introduced is the fiscal discipline. So that is something that is being seriously taken by all of us. Of course, problems are there because of the uh, uh, inflationary pressure, because of the prices of uh, uh, fuel, in the, uh, fuel and gas in the international market, which also creates its own uh, dynamics in Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by reiterating that Pakistan to, is committed to playing its part in the Committee of Nations to address the pressing challenges of our times and realize its vision for peace, stability, justice, equity, and shared prosperity. I thank you all. نگران وزیر خارجہ جلیل عباس جلانی ایشیا سوسائٹی سے خطاب کیا انہوں نے اور اس خطاب کو آپ نے ملاحظہ کیا جس میں ان کی جانب سے کہا گیا کہ دنیا میں مختلف ممالک مختلف نوعیت کے چیلنجز کا سامنا کر رہے ہیں ان کی جانب کے مسائل کا حل اجتماعی نوعیت 